not realize that in a standard sedan, of all the fuel energy you feed into the car, seven-eighths never gets to the wheels. It's lost first in the engine, idling at zero miles a gallon, the powertrain and accessories. So then of the energy that does get to the wheels, only an eighth of it, half of that goes to heat the tires and road or to heat the air the car pushes aside, and only this little bit, only 6%, actually ends up accelerating the car and then heating the brakes when you stop. In fact, since 95% of the weight you're moving is the car, not the driver, less than 1% of the fuel energy ends up moving the driver. This is not very gratifying after more than a century of devoted engineering effort. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> moreover, uh, three-fourths three of the fuel use is caused by the weight of the car, and it's obvious from the diagram that every unit of energy you save at the wheels is going to avoid wasting another seven units of energy getting that energy to the wheels. So there's huge leverage from making the car a lot lighter. And the reason this had not been very seriously examined before as was a common assumption in the industry uh, that, well, then it might not be safe if you got whacked by a heavy car, and it would cost a lot more to make because the only way we know how to make cars much lighter was to use expensive light metals like aluminum and magnesium. But these objections are now vanishing through advances in materials. For example, uh, we use a lot of carbon fiber composites in um, sporting goods. And it turns out that uh, <clears throat> these are quite remarkable for safety. Here's a uh, handmade McLaren SLR carbon car that got T-boned by a Golf. The Golf was totaled. The McLaren just popped off and scratched a side panel. They'll pop it back on and fix the scratch later. But if this McLaren were to run into a wall at 65 miles an hour, the entire crash energy would be absorbed by a couple of woven carbon fiber composite cones weighing a total of 15 pounds hidden in the front end because these materials can actually absorb six to 12 times as much energy per pound as steel and do so a lot more smoothly. And this means we've just cracked the conundrum of safety and weight. We can make cars uh, uh, bigger, which is protective, but make them uh, light, whereas if we made them heavy, they'd be both hostile and inefficient. And when you make them light in the right way, uh, that can uh, be uh, simpler and cheaper to make. You can end up saving money and lives and oil all at the same time.